Charlie, did you hit the button? Uh, you... I don't know. Where's the fucking button? The button to go live. Oh, you, that button. You do this every week. Oh, no, every I have... week you do this. No, if I we're gonna to be, fun. if we're gonna be late, I'm gonna go get a smoke. So go get a smoke. Go get a cigarette before we go live. Everybody, did you guys have your cigarette? Before we go live, did you guys have your cigarette? Hey, shit! I hit the button. You hit the oh, oh shit! No, yes, yeah, we're alive. <laughs> Welcome to your vape hot tub. I am one of your hosts, along with Charlie, and today we have a very special guest. Charlie, you see who's it? You see who's that? I do see who's mm-hmm. here. It's true what they say about Vikings. It's true. You must have paid him a lot. Hot tub. I was like, holy shit. Yep. This guy's got a baby's arm hanging from his fucking from his waist. Holy shit. Very impressive. Mad Viking. <laughs> what is happening, sir? Thanks for joining us in the hot tub. Thanks for having me in and not uh, forcing me to do full frontal male nudity. I'm just well, saying. It, we, we, we're going to save that for a little later. show. If we run dry on topics, we can we can go straight to the male nudity. I was really surprised after seeing your beard. I didn't have you picked for a guy that waxes his crotch, but <laughs> good job. I was thinking 70s, Bush. Was <laughs> it's yeah, overcompensation. Hey, whatever, whatever Barbie likes, Barbie gets. That's right. It's not only for her comfort, it's pleasure for me too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, let me say, let me get a couple shout outs here to everybody who's in the chat. First off, thanks everybody for joining. Happy Friday, man. It's Friday. I had a great week. I hope everybody else did as well. Um, We're going to do an hour show here for you. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to kickstart your weekend with some fun, some laughs, and some uh, good vaping entertainment. Subaru Nerd Vapes. What's up, Subaru? How you doing, brother? Great to see you, Todd Black. What's up, Todd? How are you, sir? Clint Johnson. What's up, Clint? How you doing, man? Great to see you, brother. Thank you for joining. Mrs. Vape for Life, Jen. Hello, Jen. How are you? Great to see you. Tommy the Zombie. What's up, Tommy? Spring Vaping UGA Girl, a previous guest on the Vape Hot Tub. How you doing, Spring? Great to see you. Big G. What's up, Big G? How you doing, man? Great to see you. Uh, Charles McLaren. Did you know Charles McLaren's a Baron Mind Viking? Did you know that? No, uh, I did not. Super rich. <laughs> Super rich run shit. Good to see you, Charles. Great. He'll, now, Charles is also, Charles is like one, like eight weeks in a row. Yeah. Uh, yeah rigged. It, it's it's so rigged. It's so rigged, but it's not rigged. Like, I love Charles, but I wouldn't <laughs> rig it for him. I wouldn't rig it for anybody. Like, anybody who knows, like, I don't rig. Anyway, good to see you, Charles. I'm super glad you are here. Joseph Sarrell, great to see you, brother. Glad you are here. My brother from another mother, Mr. Woodtick Mike. Great to see you. Robert Reagan, what's up, Robert? How are you, sir? Thank you for joining. Tracy. Oh, my God, Tracy. I haven't seen you in so long. I feel I missed you. I'm so glad you are here today. Great to see you. All right. Anybody I miss? Adrian Daniels, go Browns. If I missed you in the chat, Bones Siskeda, I am sorry. Great to see everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining. We're going to start out. Why don't we uh, you want to do a little buffet action? Yes, sir. You guys got a buffet? You guys hungry? <laughs> Matt Viking, what do you got over there? What you, what you packing? We, we need meat. Uh, what am I packing? Uh, the vice is much bigger than myself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got a little... Vapor's Cloud loving. I'm a fanboy, sorry. But we got a Hammer of God with the new Valhalla with some K Coils uh, Series Aliens running some uh, Nancy's Flan Cake by Ian B and uh, Batman. We got the Arkless Mech Mod with the Asgard 25 millimeter on it running some Southern Thing Sweet, sweet Peach Tea. Uh, Stormbreaker with the Asgard 30 millimeter with uh, K Coil's Gunger six core aliens with uh, the man with the hook up here, some Turkish harvest. Shout out to Scott for some some uh, deals on that. And then we got the Keen uh, with the bulk RTA running some Dark Star Zolo Smooth. Shout out to Dark Star and Mike because. He loves me for who I am. So <laughs> what do you got, Charlie? <laughs> I love you for who you are, too. <laughs> I had a little trip out of town uh, this week and started a new job. My buffet is kind of boring. I am rocking the uh, Yeehee IPV3 Mini. Nice. That's become my, uh, my go-to all the time carry. My billet box with uh, Paradigm Wicked Berry 50-50 12 milligram in there. Uh, the Wocket 
pod system, which goes through pods like a fucking madman. And okay. they uh, topside carbon with recurve dual on it. And in that, I've got Shy Tots Mont Blanc. Wow. Wow. Oh, how and do you like the Mont Blanc? Have, uh, a prototype pod system from Mike Babes and SD. Go ahead. A prototype. You got a prototype from Mike Babes? Are you going under the table? Are you trying to take? Are you trying to take food out of the vapor five's mouth, Charlie? Mm-hmm. Table, get the prototypes. Oh, so now you're you're working on a pod system? No, no, I'm not working on anything. I would have never buy anything that I made because it would it would suck. It would literally suck. I feel like don't buy this is terrible. Please don't buy this. The uh, the black cat jewel. <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be a jewel with a black hat sticker on it. Remember yeah. when I had my back in the day? I had my own. Uh, I had my own glue gun, so I did the glue gun revelation. It was, just, <laughs> it was just Dollar Tree glue guns with a black hat sticker on it. Yeah, there you go. That's how I do it. I totally see your prototype pod looking like a penis. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Suck on this. It's good. <laughs> so we had last week. You're, you're vaping on some of Batman's juice. So you had we had Batman on last week. He explained he was on the vape team last night. Or uh, explained it last night as well. How is it? <laughs> Actually, if you saw his last review, he looks really good. Uh, so I know with on a hot sub, he was talking about how he has good days and kind of bad days. With no, no, no. I'm talking about the juice. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about Batman. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. The, the Batman is good. <laughs> phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. There. Go ahead. It's good. No, yeah, there's literally the least. I would have to say the the one I like the least is still really good. I mean, the line is just amazing. So it's it's definitely I definitely say go and grab it and you know TRV. You know the live show is spring and circumstance and Subaru. Rising vapors. Yeah. What time we, is that? You guys are on at what eight o'clock on Saturday, right? Uh, no, we actually changed. Uh, we've changed it. We're seven thirty central on Fridays now. Okay, excellent. That's recent, though. You guys just recently did that. Yeah, what it is is uh, my me and my wife have been in roller derby for about almost a decade. Wow. So I started the channel last year, and uh, I kind of said kind of goodbye to roller derby. But then my kid started playing, and he's getting really good did help that he sprouted eight inches in like six months he's taller than me now little shithead holy cow <laughs> getting really really good which means roller derby usually happens on saturdays and now that you know it, when we roll into advocacy and stuff like this here's another thing that of why everything's getting screwed up with the industry is now you can't even use google hangouts with youtube live anymore that was always the backup because I run the OBS and all that stuff for the show. Well, when I had to be out of town, Spring would run through Google Hangouts. Well, since we can't do that anymore, I, we had to make a change. And I was like, guys, during the summer specifically, roller derby is like constant. So we switched it to Friday. But the nice thing is we found a good time slot. And uh, Friday seems a little bit more hopping anyway. People are getting off work, getting out of work, want to talk about vaping, want to vape and Usually by Saturday and Sunday, they're kind of like out doing stuff anyway. So we'll probably get a, a little bit better audience on a Friday. Friday's the hottest night. Yeah. Friday's the hottest night. Way better than Saturday. Saturday is normally a, it, there, there was nothing on Saturdays for a long time. Let me, let me do my buffet real quick. Now, my buffet okay. is not huge. No, but you know me. I'm, I'm bound. I do have the IPV mini. This will be my review coming up this week, guys is the ipv3 mini i got the little custom there job i think it's a beautiful little device i'm really really enjoying it and then of course what i just reviewed this week vitality mods flatline whoops let me get that up there flatline rda and the top side carbon compliments to stephen garlington i can't put this thing down i absolutely love it now the juices i've got charlie we got something in common mont blanc hell yeah i'm telling you right now the best thing to do it now, this is my all time number one. Nothing ever beats Mont Blanc. And it's been that way for about three years now. Well, about two and a half. But once you, this is the best to like not use it for a while, not have any, and then, and then put it back in and retry it. And I, I literally opened this up like two days ago and I'm already halfway through the bottle. And it's yeah. just so good. And then I got this the Turkish cake. If you have not tried Turkish cake, 
I beg you, I implore you. Yeah, I need to try that. To give it a shot. And if you don't like it, let me know because I will buy it off of you and pay for shipping to send it to me because I absolutely love it. It is one of my top three. I told Mike, I talked to Mike about it the other day. I was like, dude, I don't know. I can't, I, you know, I thought it was going to be good. I knew it was going to be good, um, but uh, it's perfect. It is probably, it's the best lemon vape I've ever had. And that's saying a lot because I love lemon vape. So, all right. Well, hey, I'll tell you what. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, everybody in the uh, chat there for joining us. We're going to start today out. We do a little thing here, Viking, a little thing that we like to call weird news. You like weird news? I love weird news. I like to get weird. We're going to get weird. Charlie, what do you got for us this week, brother? I got a few things. So my first weird news isn't really news, but it was just damn impressive. Uh so a few days ago, I open up the news and there's a freaking another seagull article. There's always seagull articles, but they're usually pretty boring. So I'm like another seagull article. I start scrolling, but right as I flick it to scroll, I see apple pie. I'm like, damn, I like apple pie. So I open up the article and it's a freaking seagull eating an apple pie. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna see if I can share the video Hang on a second. See if we can do this. Seagulls are like the cockroaches of the sky. <laughs> they are, man. I've seen seagulls pick up entire bagels and fly away. In New York, you walking down the street, a fucking seagull will come down and grab like like an entire like a sandwich and just fly away with it. They're so strong, it's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> so if I ever do go to New York, somebody's got to follow me with a webcam or something, watch me beat a seagull's ass over some food. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, shit. That's not it. Hold on. That wasn't it? Oh, <laughs> enough. For, well, why don't we move on to the next story, Charlie? <laughs> There's so, little seagulls stealing food, little bastard. I was going to say, it's pretty impressive how he went right up and grabbed that food. Hold on a second. Hang on. Oh, okay. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go for it. Everybody is eagerly anticipating the seagull show. So you mean like a flock of seagulls? That it's actually a fantastic seagull, band. A seagull that swallows an apple pie hole. But How I, could that even be possible? I'll see if I can get it to work later. So my next one is out of um, Colorado. And we all know what people do in Colorado. The only yeah. thing people do in Colorado, there's two things. They ban flavors and they smoke pot. They like and that's smoke about wings. it. Yeah. So um, there's a bear that hangs around this dispensary. The uh, dispensary is called the Bud Depot. And the bear, yeah, the bear hangs around the dispensary. And uh, he comes around often enough, they've named him Cheeseburger. So this, um, I guess he's a grizzly bear or a black what? bear. Wait a minute. He's got to be a black. He's got to be a grizzly. We, before we go any further with this, Charlie. Now, d d are they aware in Colorado? Or are they too stoned to realize that bears don't really assimilate into like human society? <laughs> like they will fucking eat people. Have they realized that? That they will steal like a child and run in the woods and you can't get a, like a, how are you going to, okay. How are you going to get your kid back from a grizzly bear? Running <laughs> well, so why how you can you get it back? Cause you can't, you can't reason with it. You can't be like, why Hey dude. Why would you have your kid at a pot shop? So. <laughs> gonna eat bull True. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, I always encourage kids to smoke pot. I mean, uh, I, that's yeah. just me. But yeah, and it looks like it's in a neighborhood from the location. So I'm guessing the bear just hangs around the neighborhood. Anyway, they've named the bear Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. That's that, a fucking good name. That or they're just so stoned. It's just a really big fucking cat. And they think it's a bear. <laughs> Could be a raccoon. <laughs> oh, the... um. Out there. The bear actually broke into the uh, the Bud Depot. They have like a security fence around it with the gate, and somehow the bear was able to get the gate open. The bear, yeah, was able to open the gate. Yeah. So the the this bear, is like this bear, is like figuring shit out. Yeah, he's a regular. I told you. Dude, it's a, this bear needs to be moved. They need to try to dude in a bear costume in the middle of like Yellowstone. It's a dude in a bear costume. That's all it is. It might be. So, <laughs> it could be. So you can see on the video surveillance, Cheeseburger comes and Cheeseburger like looks over the fence, looks around, and then he just busts the gate open. 
and it's you know, cheeseburger. Can I say what? I'm so sorry, Charlie. Can can I be? Can I say how awesome it is that we're no longer referring it to it to it as the grizzly bear? We're referring to it as cheeseburger. It has That's fucking name. awesome. It has a name. That's awesome. We're just gonna fucking cheeseburger's a dick. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. That is. Yeah. So a cheeseburger busts in the gate and goes to the dumpster like a freaking big old commercial dumpster, you know, and tries to get in the dumpster. Well, the dumpster is locked. So cheeseburgers like shaking it, trying to pull the door open, can't, can't get the that. freaking door undone. <laughs> cheeseburger is so not having this. Cheeseburger life. like looks at it all pissed off, then he looks around, but the dumpster's on wheels. <laughs> so he, he just freaking grabs the dumpster, rolls it to the gate, takes it outside, and pushes it down the street. And then uh, cheeseburger tried for two hours to get that freaking dumpster open. He <laughs> Jesus Christ! So, cheeseburger. So, did does cheeseburger have his medical marijuana card? What was that? Was did they have <laughs> card him for his marijuana? Oh, That's you don't need one in Colorado, do you? No. Oh, yeah, cheeseburger could be a recreational bear. That's true. Do you have any footage of this happening? <laughs> I, don't I think hope so. you do. I don't think yeah. so. Now, here we go. I think this bear has more smarts than some politicians. I think so too. Here we go. Still isn't. That may be news to a bear in the town of Lyon, about an hour northwest of Denver. The ursine broke down a gate to get onto the property of a marijuana dispensary called the Bud Depot. It proceeded to sniff around, sizing up its options before setting its sights and pause on a dumpster. Failing to break open the dumpster, the bear put its bear powers to work. It hauled the giant bin out of the gate through which it had entered and took it off site. But the dumpster failed to satisfy its chronic hunger. Reportedly, after two hours trying to pry it open, the bear gave up. It all happened around midnight and not 420. But hopefully that bear will someday learn to keep off the grass. This is InsideEdition.com. <laughs> so, there's so many jokes there's so many jokes with this dude oh he had chronic hunger first off like the, the inside edition lady who wrote that story is a complete dick like <laughs> bump the grass like ha, ha, ha. let me look at this do you think this would work for the uh keep good god that geez that almost looked completely unreal if that wasn't closed circuit tv i'd be like it's bullshit can you can you freeze frame the picture of the grizzly with the with the the green stuff behind him? <laughs> can you share that again? The psychedelic <laughs> green yeah, stuff. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because I'm going to get a T-shirt that has that picture. That is fantastic. That's fantastic. Is there is there a way you can freeze frame that and share it again? This, wow. I'm gonna get a T-shirt with this. Like that? Yeah, yeah right there. Right. That's gonna be a new T-shirt. <laughs> That's fantastic. It's a fucking grizzly bear. Like, who made this graphic in Inside Edition? They're like, look, it, need, it needs a name really tag. To, we really need to drive home the point with this article. Here, I, want, <laughs> I got a graphic for you, Cindy. Hold on a second. I'm gonna put a grizzly in front of a psychedelic screen in the back. <laughs> it needs a it needs a uh, a name tag that says cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. On it. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get cheeseburger on the show, Charlie. Can you work on that? <laughs> I'll talk to his agent or forest ranger or whatever you <laughs> see, it, see if you can get him on the show he can come over he can actually hang out he can come over and he can do the show right from here me and cheeseburger man That's like a, live on YouTube they should have they should have subtitled that the real life yogi bear I mean that's just a big <laughs> picnic basket that's all that was <laughs> oh shit charlie thank you as always brother the, dude weird news is fantastic it's literally my favorite part of the show dude so uh here we go i think let's see what let's see what we got here did you get the seagull one yeah oh charlie coming through like a champ <clears throat> that's okay it's a mcdonald's apple <clears throat> pie. oh my god that's not real that can't be real dude it's real is what that real? Thing? Can yeah. you replay it? Can you replay that? I want to see it again. It's it's surprisingly disturbing how big they yeah. can open their mouths. I'm not I even going to go. I knew a stripper in Indianapolis that could do almost the exact same thing. I was going to say, I was going to go. Porn connotation. 
Yeah. yeah. Just sitting on the guy's car. <laughs> look, look at the one in the background. The one in the background's like, excuse me, Dick. Can I just have like a bite of apple pie? You had to eat the whole thing. You see the guy in the background? The yeah. guy in the background's just like, you're a dick. The guy no. in the background is probably the reason he swallowed the thing whole. Yeah, he was going to come up and grab something. He's like, you're, you're a dick. I'm going to go back to being a seagull. I'm tired of sharing with your fat ass. I'm just going to swallow the whole thing. The bad thing is, <laughs> those last couple frames, it looked like he was looking at the guy like, ha, I got your pie, dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, dude. That's hysterical. That is freaking hysterical, Charlie. Excellent <laughs> job on the weird news this week, my brother. That is fantastic. Well, we are rolling right along. Now, Mr. Mad Viking. We're super excited to have you on here, but you know, you're going to have to be interviewed by Charlie and I, which is not an easy task. We ask, we, we ask the questions that everybody else is afraid to ask. I cannot, I cannot deep throat an apple pie. If that's the first one. <laughs> do you, Charlie, or excuse me. Do you have an apple pie, Mad Viking by chance? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to start you up. brought an apple pie. <laughs> Hope you brought some hot dogs. We're going to have a hot dog eating contest. In the chat, uh, Anarchy Coiled said that, that goal has a future in porn. That, that goal, yeah. That goal, you'll probably, yeah. Which is that? That's that's terrifying. All right, so I I, I got a little, in, you know, I do the deep dive into our guests, Charlie and I. Charlie and I are like the FBI of the vape industry. I mean, <laughs> we go after we we are like special agents. We go after the stories that nobody wants to report. And that's what we do here. We bring we bring the best news to the vape community. I've got some inside information on you. Oh God! Yeah. What? There's a lot. I, I I talked to somebody who is a coworker or a co co host of you, the, the TRV. They they called you a name. Okay. First off, they called Spring you. Spring is the host. She's the. Host. I would say I'm the co-host. And damn it, go ahead. I, I, so the, you've been labeled as a diva so can you explain that to us why they would see you as a diva of the show well you know this kind of rolls perfectly into something i kind of wanted to say about charlie is charlie got to meet spring i got to meet spring charlie you know <laughs> spring puts it this way and this is kind of a little dive on my diva ishness so she labeled it look at this handsome man when she was standing next to charlie well, what was said when she met me was, I thought you'd be taller. You <laughs> look like you're taller. hundred times prettier than Charlie. What the? I'm a sexy bitch. I mean, you look I'm like you're tall. tall. Are you not tall? No. How tall yeah, are you? You kind of sound like a short diva. Yeah, I'm a short. I'm Napoleon diva. Yeah, but you I, look I'm like you're five. about 6'2". See, <laughs> I have a 6'2 attitude, but I'm only 5'10". Yeah, you're my good pair of shoes. That's normal. That's normal. <laughs> Five dollar donation from Mr. Joseph Serrell. Have you guys had bear meat? It's really good. I have had bear meat. No, I didn't know that was a thing. Holy crap! Yeah. I, I have a good story. Like cheeseburger. Uh, it's a little <laughs> bit more. It's way gamier. Way way gamier. It's not now. It's not a cheeseburger. It's not a cheeseburger. <laughs> Surprisingly, nothing's as good as a cheeseburger <laughs> or a cheeseburger. There. yeah the, the diva thing is this kind of a, an inside joke is usually the first person to get uh, emotional i guess uh or very uh, ex exorbitant or whatever just uh, very loud and hey pay attention to me is usually me out of the team so uh but you know i i was diagnosed at 40 with add with impulse control disorder so at 40 uh, at 40 yeah because i'm over 40 by the way oh, well, I don't know I over 40 either long. I could see that shit the first show I watched. I don't know why it took anyone that long. I was going to say. Yeah. Who, 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 <laughs> Dr. Stanley Gant, Glantz, by chance? Was that your doctor? <laughs> oh, you mean the guy that says smoking is healthy for you almost? Smoking is Brandon better for you than vaping, vaping, according to him. He's pretty fucking smart. No, he's yeah. just... Probably his head oh, in his ass. Said no one ever. He also <laughs> sexually harasses women. I don't know if you knew that. He's got a sexual <laughs> harassment suit over his head right now, too freaking prick so, so anyway so you're the diva so can you give us a diva moment you have a diva moment you can give us uh shit there's tons of them uh probably the 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 one that was probably at least in our industry was probably not the the brightest idea uh, is that uh where our one of our first special guests was sam the vaping the vaping vaping bogan uh bogan. and uh, 
he he was late to our show and you know he was like oh i thought you said you know when we're live you know i thought this is what you said when when it was on and oh the time zone and i'm like he's like all you gotta do is google it and then afterwards i was like dude that was totally your fault that's totally your fault and it's just like when i tell that story people are like you you talk to first off who's sam i'm like well that's bogan i you know i talked to him but why why would you say that to him it's like because i have impulse control disorder leave me alone <laughs> so did, you, say, did he call you a cunt uh, he, actually he calls me a top cunt a lot but that's top a cunt. completely different connotation <laughs> but that's yeah, awesome that's, so, that's it. so you're kind of a diva i want to know i want you to tell me how you really feel when you're on TRV and there's a really good debate that's kicking off and then Chad goes full robot and you can't hear anything and says and you're trying to manage the audio. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's not really diva mode. I think that's just like, you know, that's something you will go into later is my idea and goals of the channel and all that kind of stuff. But no, yeah, I, I go from... I go from zero to bitch real quick when stuff happens. Like, you know, last couple of shows, we've had some audio issues and I've literally touched nothing. Nothing should have changed. And it literally threw me off so bad a couple of weeks ago that I, I have a spiel that I say at the end of every live, every review, all that. And I was so pissed and so frustrated. I'm sitting here looking at the computer, trying not just to punch the shit out of it. <laughs> And then they're all like, well, Viking, what do you got? And I'm like, I, yeah, thanks for coming out. You you know where to catch me. And I just like <laughs> went back on it. And it was just like, I, I went back and watched that replay. And I'm like, wow, dude, you you got to gotta get sometimes a little self-control and some professionalism because you basically just said, I'm busy, fuck off. Yeah. It's like, Jesus. so that's, that's kind of. Uh, at least you, you, you weren't swinging the keyboard around, smashing shit. Oh God! Luckily, it's a laptop. The keyboard's not separate because, yeah, that would probably have happened. I uh, it, luckily, you know, it's funny it, it, when when you when you I do live all the time, and it, you, we all do live, obviously, because we do this show and you do your show and all that. But there, the, you have to be able to like. It, it's really important to keep your cool. And there's times that like when you're live that you you kind of lose your cool. Somebody says something to you in the chat, and you're like, wow. Like if you said that to my face, like I literally would, I would probably be very upset with you. You know what I mean? Like that's not something I think is appropriate, but yeah. you have to keep your cool. It's, and it's hard to sometimes, right? Oh, it is. And, and I'll be, I'll be honest. I've been on medication now for several years and everybody that's known me way in the past and the way I used to be like anything a hundred times less than that, I'd be going from that da, 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 to like swinging. Just because something in my brain said that you just pissed me off and I need to punch your face. Yeah. So luckily <laughs> I make sure I'm well medicated. <laughs> so, but yeah, it, it's, 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 this is more of, I think sometimes uh, when it comes to shows and reviews and all that, it's more of a stress induced deal. And okay. yeah, you, you have to have a lot of patience or otherwise, yeah, you're just going to go off all the yeah. time. But that's There's why I really love my team though. We tend to, not only feed off each other, uh, especially like me and Spring. Me and Spring are in total sync. Yeah, uh, Spring's an ace. She's yeah, nice. and I can tell when she's like, like she wants to say something, but she's so calm and nice and everything that she just kind of lets people kind of go over stuff like that. We read each other really well, and uh, so like good example when she was on your show a couple weeks ago, I saw that she was just kind of listening to you guys, but kind of started zoning out and kind of had the space. So I texted her. I was like, Hey smile <laughs> you're on camera you know so stuff we do that so she knows when i'm starting to get out of fun mode she's like hey you need to just chill out and breathe and it's like wow. oh okay yeah. It, but it's, yeah it's it's super stressful i'll tell you the 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 stress goes away i mean i've done so many live shows now the stress goes away yeah it does because i think a lot of times like when i first started doing it i felt i forced a lot of it you know what I mean? And I think the real skill in doing live shows is you kind of just let the ball come to you. And, and I kind of play, like you kind of ride the, ride the chat a little bit, see how the chat's going. You know what I mean? Play on that a little bit. And, and I think it, it gets easier. And I don't get stressed out anymore about it. I really, really don't. Like I, don't, I used to like drive home 
Friday my show and I would think, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to talk about? Okay, I'll talk about this for eight minutes. I'll talk about this for 12. Like I literally was that because I'm an engineer. Like that's how my brain thinks. I like yeah. mapped it all yeah. out. You try to plan. Know, I'm watching the clock to switch topics. Yeah. I don't do You're that. Plan it down to the minute on a lot of your live shows. So I've seen that. But yeah, you man. do a good job with Chet. Um, one of my favorite epic moments was when a certain member got to you in Chet. Yeah, only time I ever got pissed off. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, well, you can just go fuck yourself if you're banned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn. Yeah, that's a long time coming. Yeah. Oh. That's a long time coming. Yeah, I say, Chad doesn't mess with me, but I do remember. I, yeah, I had a moment. It, it's one of those things, and, and what it is to me is I'm not a I'm not a tough guy. I'm not a violent. I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna run and body slam anybody or anything. But if we but I am someone who addresses things, and I am somebody who like if you're face to face with me and you say something that pisses me off, I mean, I'm gonna be like, yo, this, that fucking pisses me off, and this is why it pisses me off, and you're a fucking dick, and yeah. you know I'm that not gonna be physically threatening or anything, but like. You know, you can only let that shit go for so long until you're like, it, it needs to be addressed. And I'm going to do it publicly. And, you know, it was like kind of one of those things I just kept track of everything in my head. And I was like, you know what? Next time he does something, I'm fucking laying into him. And, Cause it, and, and I still like to have a conversation with him face to face and see if we could resolve the issue. And, Not that I really give a fuck, but I'd like to see what his comment would be. You know, I <laughs> see we going to say well, face. I think that's when, a point. When we're in chat, we make it our whole mission in life to fucking poke at you and troll you as hard as we can. I know. Well, see, the fucked up I'm the thing only one is... who gets trolled by my wrenches. I literally get trolled. <laughs> <by my wrenches. laughs> yeah. I've seen me. that. I get trolled the worst by my wrenches. See, I, the funny I, thing I is, you guys, you know it. We are completely polar opposite, but I'm. I, I guess I'm assimilating to you because before, you know, before the Vivance. I used to be the whole, you know, just fly off the handle. And if I'm going to punch you, I'm going to punch you. It's, it doesn't matter. But now that I have more self-control, basically, uh, that's tend to kind of what I tend to do is, yeah, I might mean mug you and I might say something. But also the kind of curse with it is, is every time I'd like fart or fall asleep, I reset. Like everything went away in my head. Like I, I can't remember shit. A CRS syndrome. Can't remember shit. Yeah. Ow. No, now I'm like elephant titus in nuts. I mean, in the mind, <laughs> I don't forget anything. So now I'm kind of getting more like you where it's like, okay, you pissed me off. I'm going to be calm and cool and say, hey, you're a douche. Yeah. And also, I have it in my head that this is your fourth strike, dude. And it's like before I never dealt with that. So it is kind of something different and kind of a learning curve, actually. So. And it, you know, it, it, it's kind of odd because it, it, there's a, there's a whole bunch of different angles to this. The first angle is what a lot of people talk about through YouTube and through trolls and things of that nature is, you know, there's always going to be people coming at you. That's just yeah. the way it is. And, and the thing about my chat is, and this is the God honest truth that, you know, Frank and Charlie and Tommy and all these guys will troll the shit on me. But if somebody comes, somebody else comes in and tries to do it, they're fucking gone. Oh yeah. Like that. Yeah. It's like it's like your yeah. brother. Like I can pick on my brother, but you can't pick on my brother. Yeah. Don't say yep. shit, or we'll all come after you. So, you know, it, it, and the thing about it is also is there's not you can't take a lot of context in messages. It's like getting an email and getting mad about it. You know what I mean? Like there's no context in that email unless yeah. they spurt out say you're a fucking dick. Like, but a lot of times you read an email and be like, that email pisses me off. But it's same with chat. Like you don't know exactly where it's coming from. It could be joking, but if you see a repetitive repetitive thing of it over and over and over again you can start to put together what exactly is going on and i think that's what you have to that that's a different what you have to differentiate yeah you gotta um, follow that pattern yeah. well and i think that's, that's what i do typically have, i don't get mad well, at any one comment yeah. but if and i see the same thing over and over and over again it's a fucking problem right you got to use the context because we have people from all over the world that are commenting and english isn't always the first language and you you can't get tone out of a message that's written in chat so it's tough sometimes well, and that's also kind of the nice thing about technically being a lower subscribed uh, vape reviewer with a, you know, on a show, a regular show, is your regulars that do that, that poke at you constantly. Sorry, I have to. Gay Coils, what's up, Cayman? My coil builder from Norway is in here. What's up, dude? So anyway, is it's really cool because, you know, your wrench is at your level because, you know, you're over 3K, so it's different than my 510 or whatever not, but not much difference well but here's where it's different and this is where it's cool though because you take somebody like the big guys like bogan jay mike all them 
I don't even know if most of the time they even pay attention, but your your really loyal people there, it's kind of like a they've marked their territory, which is cool. That just shows how much they really enjoy you and your content and that loyalty. Mm. When when you do have that newbie comes in and be like, oh, this guy, black cat, what the hell? Is is he racist? And they're all like, uh, excuse me, what are you doing here? You know, yeah. it's kind of cool. And you yeah. know it because you're not at, you know, three hundred thousand people to try to track. So right. I think it's kind of nice that as you build up slowly with your base, that you'll you'll figure out your regulars that actually get you and 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 like you. That makes sense. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, something that's really interesting about that. I had a guy tell me, this was about six months ago, it might have been longer than that, but he watched my show and he messaged me after the show and he said, hey, you know, I don't know how we got in a conversation, but he was he was uh, somebody who um, doesn't do YouTube, and I don't, I, but he was trying to give me advice about YouTube. And, you know, you kind of take that, you're kind of like, okay, you know, what kind of advice are you trying to give me? Well, the advice he was, he was like, well, you know, I noticed in your chat that it's all the same people that I saw three months ago. And like, you, you know, what's wrong with that? Blah, blah, blah. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's exactly what the kind of show that I want to have. I want to have people that show up every day and like enjoy the show and hang out. That's like my goal. That was my goal when I started this is to create a group of people that like, like to hang out in the community that likes to hang out together. And it was like, you know, it was like weird. Like he was like trying to make it like it, Charlie was there. He trying to make it like it's a bad thing. And I was like, dude, like that, that's the whole fucking point of this. Yeah. We're doing this. You know right. what I mean? So, yeah, yeah I mean, it you is have good. fun with it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So how long? Okay. So let's get back to, we're talking a little bit too much about me. Let's get, let's get back to you. You're, you're interesting. You're I'm, sexy. I, I, you're you're I mysterious. Am, I am sexy. <laughs> very sexy okay here's my i still think i'm prettier than both of you i'm just saying i'm i'm about to start stripping and make some money because no you are pretty you look great in the hot tub (laughs) i tell you i was very impressed so i almost i almost did this in my bathtub just for pure pure shits and giggles but then i'm like that would have been fantastic if you could have kept from getting electrocuted by like your mic and everything that'd be fantastic although if you would have got electrocuted my views would have went through the roof no yeah yeah, you'd be the second most popular video. The first one is the deep throating seagull. I'm just the deep. Th- that's a really good one. We're probably gonna get copyright strike for that. <laughs> the seagull's gonna copyright us. Yeah, like, look, dude. Hey, I, dude, that fucking gorilla already sued uh, over his Instagram rights. Yeah, that's what? right. Yeah, there's a gorilla. Yeah, we had that in weird news. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, Peter sued a photographer on behalf of a gorilla's uh, copyright rights because the gorilla or the the monkey took a uh, selfie of himself that went viral and Peter sued for his his rights as a monkey wow so seen scott so we got a couple of things i want how long have you been vaping how long have you been reviewing how did you make the transition i'm putting all these questions into one because i want to i want to get this like real quick yeah. Um, how, how did you transition into doing YouTube? Why did you transition into doing YouTube? Um, so uh, years ago, uh, I did try vaping back when we had those things called IntelliSigs. They were the ones that looked like cigarettes and you pulled out the little filter and it had the little cotton square or uh, sponge. And that's what you put the liquid in. I actually quit smoking back then using those for about almost a year. But I smoked uh, two to sometimes three packs of Marble Reds a day uh, ever wow. since I was 12. Wow. Uh, so for about... You didn't have a problem well, getting cigarettes back then? No, no. And no neither no. did I. <laughs> but, you know, I'm over 40, so I smoked that much for, you know, 25, 28 years, somewhere around in there. Um, but finally, uh, I switched to vaping this time for good uh in october last year so i'm not even on a full year uh and the success with that was is because i was a flavor chaser more than anything that's what kept me going with it and i started with like six milligram which a lot of people are like how the hell did you quit smoking two packs of cigarettes a day to six milligram that's what i did but it's because i also spent probably thousands of dollars in the first couple months chasing flavor yeah so um but i started the channel in november Uh, So we're not even a year in that one either, uh, because when I, uh, a lot of people were saying, oh, if you're going to vape, watch Rip Trippers, watch, you know, the big guys. And I did, and they were entertaining and they're kind of informative, but 
they didn't answer a lot of my questions was that they were just kind of glazing over stuff. And that's the reason I started the channel because my very, very first video was horrible, but <laughs> it was there. It's uh, me using the Daedalus coil building tool to build a simple uh, dual or tricore fused Clapton. Mm. Uh, because at that time, before I knew better and before I met gay coils, I thought, oh, fuse Clapton's best coils in the world. You can't get any better than that. You get well, Right. We all learn. Uh, but it was something also I could make. And uh, I kept seeing a lot of people going, uh, I need coils. I need somebody to build me coils. This And it's like, guys, you spend 50 bucks on this. Here's a video. To, I mean, just do it on your own. It takes like 20 minutes. And then it was like, after about a couple instructional videos, I'm like, you know what? I, I have been a jack of all trades. Like I've been in retail. I am now a metal worker. Uh, I've had like... You know, I've been working for 30 some odd years and I probably had like 70 friggin' jobs. Wow. And I'm, I, I would like to say I'm a jack of all trades, but master of none. But for some reason, reviewing just feels like shit. I, I think I'm good at this. Mm. I think I am. Yeah. And it's <laughs> the only thing that's like it enjoys my my hobby of vaping and not smoking and smelling like a dirty asshole. <laughs> but I, I don't know. There's just something about it. Even when I screw up and I know I did, it's still like, you know what? It's still better than what I've been doing for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So that, and that's why I full on went into it. And then I found spring on a bunch of lives and I was like, you know what? These live shows seem like they're a friggin' blast. You know, let's let, can we do it? And then we started that up. And uh, now that I've noticed uh, it's a little different now where you're talking about how you just got to get comfortable with it and so on and so forth. That was really it seems strange, but I was kind of withholding a lot. Now I kind of pretty much say what I want to and say some pretty outrageous stuff. And now it's getting more less stressful because it's like, hey, I can just be like, hey, nipple, let's do this. You know, just the stupid shit that comes out of my head constantly and yeah. people love it. And it's yeah. like, hell yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's a key to it is, is being being yourself. Yeah, yeah. you got to be able to be you on camera. Or people see right through that shit you can't be somebody else and just be yourself and be goofy. And I think, I think the big mistake a lot of people make, they try to be too serious. Yeah. They try to be too serious. And um, boy, that's a recipe for disaster in this game. That was totally that me. Too. Recipe for disaster. Cause I'll tell you what, as soon as somebody sees you're trying to be really serious, they're going to fuck with you. <laughs> Cause there's a lot of funny people out there. There's it's a lot of funny people and they'll start making jokes on you. And then that's oh, it. Yeah. Once they realize they're getting to you, you're done. And that was the best thing that I think anybody has ever said about me in a very long time, except for my wife, which we've been together for almost 20 years. Spring, when she posted her video when we got to meet not that long ago, because I was in Kentucky with a uh, roller derby for my kid uh, when we got to meet and the whole I thought he'd be taller uh, is she actually said in that video that what you see on camera, 100% who I met. There is not a single difference between the hours we hung out that day versus on our live and in his reviews. And that to me was like, even if I don't accelerate to hundred thousand viewers in six months, I don't care because there can't be anybody that ever watches being like, I wonder if he's fake because I just got validated that I'm doing it right. I, I'm being me and you know, take me or leave me. Uh, I'm funny. I don't care. I think I'm funny. I got one person. Yeah in oh, my okay. chat like you're not funny be like guess what you're wrong i'm funny <laughs> that yeah i think i'm funny too that's all that matters as long as you, it, i think i think the key is just being able to laugh at yourself mm. just being able to laugh at yourself and realize you know what like a lot of times you do things you make mistakes especially doing it live yeah. make mistakes just accept it be like i'm an idiot thanks for and that's, helping. that's that's pretty much i think people appreciate that there is one thing i do want to pander and let people know i mean i'm a recent patron of you and i'm only a patron of bogan and so i all I ever would be what i thought i'd ever be a patron and just because i talked to sam he's a cool dude the reason why because i had never watched you before you know spring knew everybody she was like have you seen this person this person i'm like no 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 yeah. and she was like you gotta you gotta check out scott black hat whiteface and you hooked me on one of the very first lives. And uh, even my wife, who does not watch reviews, uh, she helps monitor our show. 
but yeah. she will watch you as well. And, and it's still stuck in my head. And this is why I know that one, you're genuine and two. Yeah, I agree. You're funny as hell. I love the shit out of you is, <laughs> and I've said it when you were on our show, it's that face you make. You could be saying the dirtiest, the most degrading thing ever, but that grin with that head turn and those eyes, dude, you could be saying anything to me. And the whole time I'm just sitting there going, this is fucking awesome. He just told me to go <laughs> stick my thumb in my butt. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's doing that little smile and like, hey, yeah, hey, nice, you know, it's just yeah, he's it's got that every time. Kid face. I've got that. Yeah. It's, I, it's all about crazy. having fun, man. I go into every episode like I'm gonna have fun. I want everybody to have fun. And I'll tell you what, when you're having fun, people realize it and they'll have fun too. And I think that's the key. We I were uh, many we live were, shows it's about yeah. having fun, man. You know, a lot of people do live shows and you know they they, they try to make it serious or they try to be rude about things. It's like, that's not fun. So that's we were fun. talking, like, Let's just have fun, talk shit, make fun of each other and have fun. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking in chat, Scott. And if you were ever serious, you either forgot to unmute before you said it, or you were buffering when you were being serious. Might have been. Never fucking seen it. Might yes, have been. I did. I, I did a couple, I did a couple advocacy videos in the beginning. I was pretty serious in those. Also were, probably pretty uh, wrong. Cause I didn't know shit serious. about it. See, and that's why I tell everybody in every single one of my videos, I raise awareness. I don't know the facts. I will direct you to the people like Matt uh, from Suck My Mod, you know, uh, Nick Grim Green and Bogan, stuff like that. I, I'm just an awareness button, you know, but but speaking of advocacy, we definitely, if you have time, we should probably definitely couple hit minutes topic. Before we do the giveaways, yeah. Yeah, we got a pretty a pretty serious thing going on. Charlie Charlie can certainly uh, certainly touch on this a lot more than I can. But uh, we got a, a lawsuit coming in from the Vapors Trade Association against the FDA versus we're not aware of the PMTA, which is the process that you have to go through in order to have an e-juice or product um, certified and allowed by the FDA. I guess is the way you could say it. But uh, they're putting a lawsuit against it because they're they saying it's unfair for the company. Right. No, don't. They, um, <clears throat> it was the VTA um, along with the other plaintiff was Vapor Stockroom, who is out of Kentucky. And um, everybody, I'm sure every even everybody in chat has had juice that came out of Vapor Stockroom. I think they've got 40 lines of liquid. Um, they supply uh. most of what a lot of the vape shops carry. So... <clears throat> They sued, um, and the VTA made some really good points. The lawsuit is actually well written, in my opinion. They made the points that uh, the FDA, in their own words, for years has said, we don't know the rules of the road yet. We don't know how to regulate um, ENDS devices, electronic nicotine delivery systems. And... Every time that there was a deadline set, the FDA moved the goalposts. So this lawsuit points out what a problem that is, along with the fact that there's only five to six labs that can do the aerosol testing um, for PMTA qualification or certification. And there's no way that the labs we have in the United States could get to all of the, um, or even, even part of the e-liquid companies that we've got they estimate 3 million vapor products that need to go through the PMTA for vape shops to carry what they're carrying now. <clears throat> so they filed this and shown that it's an arbitrary and capricious move and that the FDA has to go through their rulemaking process where they give advance notice, take comments, review comments in the scientific method, and then go through the rulemaking process. And when this federal court stepped in and did regulation via litigation instead of the typical legal process. Um, that's what this lawsuit is all about. It's unattainable for everybody and it shouldn't have been done the way it was done. It's basically their claim. <clears throat> I totally agree. That is, it just, it seems like, like they, they said kind of almost a line and then, you know, we kind of rebuttal back and they're like, oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. You're getting a brain? Uh, now, here you go. Here's, here's something different. It's it's like they're, they're constantly, it's a like a shadow games 
cat and mouse type of situation. It's like, you know, we're trying to reach basically their cheese and they keep freaking moving it. Yep. And Matt Gunther just said in chat, no public comment period. <clears throat> you can't even get stuff done like that. Um, Scott was muted. Council meeting. I had a couple of really good comments. Yeah. I was muted. <laughs> I mean, so I mean to, uh, look that that you want to be serious or my two serious comments I had. Oh, all right. <clears throat> I don't think I don't think the FDA's intention was ever to get any manufacturer PMTA certification. I don't think that was their intention. I think their intention was to keep moving the cheese. And I think probably, you know, when the when the doors are shut and they really talk about it, you know, oh, yeah. when nobody's listening, that's their intention. Oh, yeah. Because uh, there's with, with every politic or with every kind of organization that relates to government, there is the public side of what they tell you. And then there is the truth. And it's never the same. And I think that they were getting a lot of pressure from pharmaceutical companies, tobacco companies. Now they've got all these mom groups who are supported more than likely by pharmaceutical and tobacco companies. But they've got all this pressure to get it off. And the easiest thing for them to do and to remain heroes and look like they're doing right for the country is to get rid of all of it. Yep. That's the easiest thing. The hard thing, and the thing that would probably hurt their pop their pockets, you know, is to actually look at the technology and decide what they really need to do with it and allow it into the into the country with you know a certain way with regulation and not ban everything or get rid of everything. So, right. and but whether they do it or not, historically the FDA, and I don't think they want to. <laughs> totally, I think they want to have two or three products that are owned by a big tobacco. Sure. Um, before, That's goal. before vaping took off and got popular, you can look at the big tobacco companies. They were all doing really high dollar R and D on electronic cigarette devices. They're just such big companies and moved on such a big level that they were really slow to innovate compared to the, the vaping community. <clears throat> I think the FDA wants to narrow it down to say maybe three or four companies have one device um, that is a closed system no 510 can't be modified and in my opinion that's how the fda knows how to regulate is when you've got three or four big companies that are competing and have the whole market share of the u.s i mean i, I think that it, it and we're going to move on to the giveaways here in a second i want to, a couple more comments from us here i, I think the, the the big things that really need to be done is 21 and that's my opinion 21 for the nation <clears throat> no to, no tobacco products for anyone 21 that takes the kids argument pretty much off the table or at least it did for alcohol at least it did for alcohol it helped with alcohol and i think that could really really help us there'll be some hanger honors but you can still point back and be like well, it's 21 now <clears throat> so i think that's one thing they can do and the other thing is i think they really do need to to somehow regulate the e-liquid um, but they need to make it a fair process that people can do it because we need to have it regulated to make sure that everything in it is okay. They're standing with, you know, because uh, nobody wants to vape something that could be toxic. Right. Yeah. They don't want to have it. Any right. this, I'm doing this for health improvement. I'm not doing this to get sick. Yeah, we're, okay. we've moved away from toxins. We've moved away from toxins, right? So I think that they're really certainly that somebody needs to get involved in doing some sort of regulatory of the e-juice. And, the, and if that knocks like, some e-juices out, yeah, that probably will happen because a lot of the, you know, you know, a lot of the small companies aren't going to be able, but it does need to be somewhat regulated. It can't just be a free market. It can't just be open up to everything or there could be a lot of problems. But so I get it. But uh, yeah, I think this lawsuit is fantastic. I think that this could help actually not only prolong it, but maybe they'll make it easier. Right. It easier for these companies to actually get, and in, get these juices, <clears throat> get them approved. It does a pretty good job of, um, Using what the FDA has presented as their evidence along the years, we kind of turn that around and use that in our favor, which is always a good move in court. And it gives some realistic remedies on how they, how they could handle things. Um, so we'll see what happens. It's good that it was filed in Kentucky. I'm sure that played a part in, in uh, vapor stock room being a plane. But one other thing that everybody needs to watch for <clears throat> flavor bans they're going on municipalities like crazy colorado i watched two in the last two weeks um glenwood springs and boulder you guys can find the boulder hearings um that took place i think tuesday night it's scary the way these city councils look at flavors yeah 
And in fact, they wanted to do a flavor band and towards the end of it, they were like, well, how about if instead of doing a flavor band, let's allow flavors, we'll allow tobacco, mint and menthol. And then that'll just be a happy compromise. So the vape shops can still sell those three flavors. And we get things like bubble gum that have no use for adults and are only for children. That was unanimous. Every city council member said there's no way bubble gum is marketed at, at, as, at an adult. Bullshit. So you guys need to watch at least one of these hearings um, to kind of see what's going on because it will be coming to to your town most likely or the town next to you pretty soon. I think I think you can take a couple things from that. Is one they they drove the flavor thing. I mean the flavor narrative. Oh man, I'll tell you they've done a phenomenal job of demonizing that and making it sound yeah. like it is for kids. They've done well, just a phenomenal older. job. It's almost un it's unarguable really. Boulder did an amazing job um, with vape shops from the Colorado area showing up at that hearing. I mean, the testimony that a lot of vapors and vape shop employees and owners and liquid manufacturers gave was unreal. And there was at least as many moms sitting on the other side of the room as there was we had people at the hearing with the best presence I've seen. There was that many moms holding signs up that said flavors of kids, vaping kills kids vaping well, is a problem for our community and, like and, and boulder I, I lived in colorado and i'm gonna tell you boulder and in san francisco are similar in an aspect that everybody has a fucking voice and everybody's got a fucking opinion and they cater to the person who's the loudest it's the same thing instead of just saying you know this is the way it is public health blah 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 everybody's got a fucking opinion and everybody's driving it home and like it's just it's too much it, it, it's too much big government in those type of areas and that's the kind of places they're going to get we've got to move to the giveaways yeah, we've got to move to the giveaways. I've got a couple of giveaways for you guys. Before we get out of here, we got a couple of minutes left. First giveaway I'm going to do, everybody's in chat here. We're doing a $25 gift to get to the greatest e-liquid on the face of this earth. And if you have not got Mont Blanc, you should really do that. But before you do that, you should get some Cat's Whiskers. Because Cat's Whiskers is the number one e-liquid on, on the universe. <laughs> number one yep. on the universe. You know why it is? Because I said, does it, is it followed up by any statistics? No. There's no statistics that prove that, but yeah, I'm just like the FDA. I just say things and you yeah, believe. That's all that matters. All right. I need a number between one and 150. Go. Yeah. Boulder is, Boulder's annoying as fuck. I, I used to live in Colorado and we used to go up to Boulder every, every once in a while. And I can remember them like yelling at me because I was, I had a Rottweiler and I was like walking my dog. They yelled at me. He's like, the ordinance. I'm like, what ordinance? He's like, you're not allowed to walk your dog right here. You have to walk your dog over there. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, like the ordinance. And I just wanted to be like, really? Like, yeah. Okay, well, I tell you, she bites. And if you come up to me. <laughs> well, it, it's really funny because you hear all the discussion about public health, like amongst the um, council members about public health and how kids are using nicotine and all that. And then they're like, all right, we're going to take a 10 minute smoke break. Everyone can go to the bathroom, go smoke. Yeah. We'll readjourn. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. It, it, it's really it, it's idiocracy in a, in, a, in a fucking nutshell that's what it is the other point i was going to make about city council is city council members are fucking stupid they're dumb don't think that because they're on city council that they're these like oh, look this at, infinite wisdom and they're your community leaders they're fucking retards look at that let's be real that, that moron out of the vape community was a freaking city council member that got arrested last week yeah imagine who <laughs> For someone like that, if you have prison tats on your face, it should be like an uphill battle to get elected to a freaking political. I grew up in a very. Well, I don't want to talk about that. I grew up in a very very small town, and I almost won a city council position at nineteen. Yeah, city council people are fucking idiots. So don't no. ever think a city council like they should be running your city. What they should be doing is probably out like cleaning your city. But up. the good yeah. thing is, That's I'll tell you the good thing about. with city council members: <laughs> is you can show up at city council meetings maybe three or four times a year and they see your face and they just automatically assume you're friends. And it's real easy to call up your city council member and be like, Hey, there's this vape ban. That's all the megaphone moms are going to be preaching next week. I really need you to rethink this. Um, as a voter, I'm a vapor and they'll listen way more than state or federal legislators do. Yeah, I was 19 and still an addict at that time. That's what's sad about it. And there we go. You're muted, Scott. How did that happen? Was I didn't even mute that time. Second number is 127. 
Third number is 112. Oh, I was so close. <clears throat> 112 is our winner. Let's scroll up. I got a oh, I didn't 113 even put it Todd Black. 106 spring. I think we got 106 is going to be our winner. 106, 106. Oh, if spring wins, that is, it's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. Spring baby girl, you're a winner. Congratulations. You got 25. Rigged. Shy Tots e with the number one e-liquid on the face of this earth. Now, to get that, you know what you're going to do. You've watched before. You need to contact Jane on Instagram, Shy Tots 26. Make sure you're following her. Also, I want to mention a few people in the chat today. If you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and throw a uh, subscribe in there. I would really appreciate it. You're going to get some great content. You're going to get a lot of sexy. Turn that big red button right Hit the, hit the hit the subscribe button. Do, do, give me show me some love. We're showing you freaking seagulls that eat pies for Christ's sake. <laughs> this is a big time show. All right, first winner is Miss Spring. So Spring got her. Down. Our second giveaway is for three sets of coils, a bottle of e liquid from Turk, and a bag of the greatest fiber cotton on earth, the holy fiber. This is going to anybody <laughs> now. To enter this giveaway, you had to put in a number, or excuse me, you had to repost a pic from the Great Wombatsky's page on Instagram with the hashtag Black Cat Fam at Great Wombatsky. If you did that, you're allowed to enter. If you didn't, please don't because I can't give you the prize. I need a number between one and 150. Go. Hey, Drew, what's up, man? Perry, what's up? Robert, I think I said hey to you. What's up, man? Addie Tooney, what's up, brother? Barbie, how you doing, hon? Great, thank you for joining. Ian Thomas, what's up, Ian? How you doing, man? Good to see you. So, yeah, that's the uh, that's the other thing we share in common, Scott, is we're both uh, recovered uh, addicts too. You yeah. know, we talked about that before. Yeah. Yep. There's a lot of us. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of us in this community. It's a fantastic community for people in recovery. It yeah. Really is great support here, man. No, oh, yeah, great support in this community. A lot of people that have struggled with it had some really fucking tough times in their life. Yeah, <clears throat> a lot of great experience. Well, and the funny thing is, we we're talking about the, the the VTA and all that, and we're talking about people's perceptions. I was telling you earlier, I went to go grab lunch today, and guy had a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, and he saw me hit my vape, and he's all like, "You need to stop that vaping stuff. It's bad for you." Da, da, da. And I'm like, "What about that thing that's hanging out of your mouth, dude?" So yeah, we got to change more opinions, even of non vapers, to really get good backing. Yeah, yeah and yeah. one problem that I've seen is. Everyone that I talk to who's given me the speech about vaping being worse than smokers is smokers that don't want to quit smoking. <laughs> it's a huge problem. It's like they can either think about quitting smoking or they can just say, oh, that shit's worse for me than smoking. I'll just keep smoking. And they feel like they're making a healthier choice. Yep. All right. Uh, I saw some people say didn't know about Bob. You can post on Facebook too. Just wherever you can or contact me and I'll help you. I know it can be kind of a pain in the butt. The repost app used to be really, really easy. Now it's kind of a pain in the butt. If you, turn music if, today, you, um, if you spray paint it on your neighbor's house and take a picture, you actually get two entries. Get two <laughs> yeah. Where where can you get Holy Fiber, Scott? I was trying holy to Fiber. So you're going to be able to get it from me here in about a week. There you go. So I'm going to be, I'll be uh, being able to sell it here in the United States here in about a week. Um, Not through YouTube though. Well, not through YouTube. You just contact me by my, <laughs> my contact information below. Um, be like, I think it's like four fifty or five bucks a bag. Um, I'll probably do special, like two for eight, to start sending them out. But I, I'm going to. Uh, I really want to kind of push this out. I'm just, you know, once you guys try it, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be hooked. I'm telling you, you're gonna be absolutely hooked once you try it. Well, I'm uh, interested because you were saying it's really good for Max, and I mean, what did I just present? A shit ton of Max. That's yeah. what you, it, it, you'll never, ever burn it ever. 60 winning number is 60. Um, I can show you here, like, see how clean that looks still. That's from Wednesday. And I've been vaping this thing exclusively. You'll see there's no wear and tear burn or anything on that cotton. Damn. Nothing. And I'll be, and I can show you that, you know, next Friday, if I'm, I probably be vaping the same thing, but if I were, then you'll look and it'll be exactly the same. It's pretty amazing. It really, really is. I really, I really enjoy it quite a bit. All right. Let me, uh, so we got winning number is 60. Let me roll up to you. One.
Let's see. I think we got a. Am I in the right one? Forty-one, Ian Thomas. Forty-one, for I think Ian Thomas won. Ian Thomas, forty-one. Congratulations, Ian. You, sir, are the winner. Uh, I got your information, I believe. Um, shipping, though, we'll have to talk about probably like it's gonna be because you're across the water, so it'd be kind of pricey to send it over to you. But I will get it to you. No worries. We'll uh, talk about it, and I'll get it out to you tomorrow. That all right, guys? Well, before we get out of here. Let's uh, let's kick it over to the man of the hour, Mr. Mad Viking. Anything you want to say before we get out of here, sir? Oh, I thought we were talking about Charlie. He's the man of the hour, right? <laughs> I just want to thank you for coming by and to vape with a Viking. And uh, I definitely want to give a special shout out to Charlie and to Black Cat for having me on. It's it's always a blast to be able to talk to Scott one on one. So uh, check me out on YouTube. I have a Facebook uh, fan page as well on Instagram. Twitter, you know, I never really go on Twitter. <laughs> it's kind of useless. And uh, I am a co-host of the Rising Vapors uh, live vape show. We have changed our time. We do 7.30 p.m. Fridays now. Uh, so you'll be able to see me, spring va vaping UGA girl that just rigged that juice, uh, <laughs> Circumstance Vapes and Subaru Nerd Vapes. So, yeah, just want to thank you both for having me on and and making me uh, giggle my ass off in my mid-afternoon day. <laughs> Charlie. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, everybody in chat, I screwed up. I'm going to drop a link in chat to Viking's channel. Go over there and give him a sub. If you don't watch his reviews, he really does a good job on uh, um, hardware and juice reviews. Um, and check out their show, which has now moved to Friday night. And join us back here Friday to start off um, your Friday YouTube week, I guess it is. But yeah. we're actually who made Friday the best night on YouTube. Pretty much. So, I mean, at least Friday late afternoon. Yeah. yeah. So well, what, do you, what do you think we picked Friday? We're like, people are already jazzed with Black Cat. Might as well go on after. <laughs> and after the best show in the universe. Hell so, yeah. yeah. Come one. check us out next week. Thanks for watching the show and sticking with us, everyone. Appreciate it. Take Thank it you, Charlie. Love you, brother. Hey, Viking, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, Absolute sir. pleasure. I had a great time. I hope you did as well. And we'll have to have you back um, very soon, and we'll see what's going on. If you don't watch The Rising Vapors or you haven't subscribed to Mad Viking Vapor, please do that. He deserves it, man. He is a hardworking man, just like all of us, and he's kicking some major ass. His reviews are really, really good. The, the Rising Vapor show is fantastic. I've actually been a guest on that show. I had a freaking blast. That's on tonight, 830 Eastern Time. Eastern, yeah. Yep. Eastern time, 8.30 Eastern time on Spring UGA Vaping. So get over on Spring's channel. If you're not subscribed to her, then you, if you're not subscribed to her and I find out, oh, you're going to be in trouble. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yell at you. No, I won't yell at you. But you should be subscribed to her as well. Thanks, everybody. You know what? You've got some great shows on tonight. You've got The Rising Vapors. You've got The Green Room. You've got Vape Stew, which if you didn't watch last week's Vape Stew, I was on there. Man, it was so much fun. Those guys are fantastic. That's on at 10 o'clock on Tenacious DX Vape Show channel. And you got Tommy, the, the wickedest, most raunchy, baddest show ever, 11 o'clock, is vaping with or hanging with Tommy and friends. Make sure you tune into all that. I'll see you in the chats. Have a fantastic week. And, and I will see you Monday. We got Dragon's Breath is going to be our featured builder. Can't wait for that. I hope to see you guys on Monday at 5 o'clock. We are out of here. Enjoy your weekend, guys. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>